This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Last year, thanks to a combination of bad weather, a spike in demand after the pandemic, and war-related disruption, global food prices skyrocketed to new heights, pushing hundreds of millions of people into acute food insecurity. This was truly terrible news, but fortunately over the last six months or so, global food prices have fallen steadily. And according to the UN's most recent report from early February, they're now down at nearly 20% from their March 2022 peak. So in this video, we're going to look at why food prices are continuing to fall, the impact this has had on global food insecurity, and why, despite this good news, the world still needs to do more to combat global food insecurity. So, before we get into the good news, a bit of context. Even before the war in Ukraine kicked off, global food prices were worryingly high. Supply chain disruption caused by the pandemic had pushed prices up about 30% in 2021 compared to 2020, according to the UN's Global Food Index. The war in Ukraine only exacerbated the problem, for at least three reasons. First, both Ukraine and Russia usually accounts for a significant fraction of global food exports. Russia and Ukraine have the third and tenth most agricultural land respectively. And before the war, they together accounted for 12% of all exported calories. Obviously, the war in Ukraine and the sanctions imposed on Russia disrupted exports. Second, the war and the subsequent sanctions disrupted potash fertilizer exports from Russia and Belarus. Third, the war pushed energy prices, and specifically gas prices, up to record highs, which had a knock-on impact on food prices, because, well, farming requires energy, and ammonia fertilizer is only produced as a byproduct of natural gas combustion. Anyway, by March, food prices went up another 30% or so, and about 70% higher than they were in 2020 and pre-pandemic. However, in the months since, global food prices have fallen impressively steadily. According to the UN's Food Price Index, updated monthly, in January food prices fell by another 1%, which means they're now actually lower than they were in January of last year. According to the UN's report, the drop was driven by declines in the price indices of vegetable oils, dairy and sugar, while the price of cereals and meat remained largely stable. So why is this? Why are food prices falling, even though the war in Ukraine is continuing? Well, there are a few obvious reasons. First, there was the UN-backed grain export deal in March, which allows Ukrainian ships to export grain via the Black Sea, with the oversight of Turkish authorities. Second, the price of energy and fertilizer has come down a bit, as markets have recalibrated to accommodate sanctions and war-related disruptions to supply. Finally, the weather improved towards the end of the year, and the drought that affected much of Europe and China mostly abated. It's also worth noting that, everything else being equal, we should expect food prices to come down over time, as farming becomes more efficient. Data from the UN-affiliated Food and Agriculture Organization shows that cereals yields have nearly tripled since the 60s, which is one of the reasons why, despite a growing population and expanding appetites, we're actually using less land for agriculture than we did in the 90s, reversing a 500-year trend. Assuming these trends continue, slowing population growth should actually accelerate the decline in prices. For context, global population growth peaked in 1990 and has declined sharply in the last few years. However, while falling prices and the general trend towards cheaper food are clearly great news, it's not all rosy. Unfortunately, despite this drop in prices, a record number of people are currently facing acute food insecurity. According to the UN, 349 million people are currently suffering from acute food insecurity, up from 135 million in 2019. This was a point made by Pakistan's Minister for Foreign Affairs, Hina Rabini Khan, when we interviewed her at the Munich Security Conference last week. Um, over the last few years, we've seen a significant rise in global food prices, mm -hmm. which has had a tragic impact on living standards mm -hmm. in Pakistan and other areas so. of the world as well. Now, fortunately, UN data suggests that things are starting to reverse course and some food prices are coming down again. 
But are you concerned about global food stability generally? And do you think that the issues with climate change could make these crises worse in the future? Okay, so let me give you a report card. Yeah. Uh, I was in this session which talked about food and climate nexus also. And uh, the number of people who were acutely stressed mm. in terms of food shortage and food security was 195 million in 2019. Do you know what the number is right now in 2022? Right. 345 million. Wow. When I saw that number, I almost did not believe it. Yeah. I verified my sources. It was being quoted by WFP and was the source which was leading into OCHA, UN OCHA. Mm -hmm. And this is number was used on the same panel as me was the WFP, uh, uh, you know, person. And he also was quoting this number. Now, this is our report card. So how well we doing in the world? That's the report card. Yeah. And what so why is food insecurity on the rise if prices are decreasing? Well, it's in part because as central banks have raised interest rates to combat inflation, the global economy has slowed. While this might have helped bring food prices down, it also means that people are poorer and aid agencies like the UN and the World Food Programme don't receive as much money as they usually do, which exacerbates food insecurity. It's also because rising interest rates and energy prices have put a strain on national budgets, which is something else Rabini Khan mentioned. Um, it's been reported that since the flooding, uh, Pakistan has been seeking debt relief from some of their international creditors, including China, who represents about 30% yeah. of Pakistan's national debt. Considering this, do you think that we need a new format for international debt relief um, in order to support developing countries better, especially given the growing tensions between the Paris Club and China? Uh, currently, in the circumstances that have been created because of the food crisis and the oil crisis, this has a huge impact on almost every developing country. Certainly in Africa, certainly many countries in South Asia, and perhaps many countries in Central Asia also and beyond. Um, now, what that requires is international reaction. What that requires is to look at debt relief or the burden of de debt, which has been exacerbated because of the food crisis and the oil crisis, especially the oil crisis. Countries like Pakistan, 25% of our budget on oil imports. When oil imports suddenly become really, really dearer mm -hmm. by hundreds of percent, what do you do? This means less money for national governments to subsidize food, which is common practice in the developing world. But perhaps the main reason that food insecurity is on the rise is the increased prevalence of wars. Conflict is the biggest driver of hunger, with 60% of the world's hungry people living in areas affected by war and violence. Today, active wars in Ukraine, Syria, Sudan and Yemen, and the aftershocks of conflicts in Ethiopia and Afghanistan have pushed millions more people into food insecurity. Because, well, it doesn't matter how cheap food is if war prevents you from buying it. This is especially worrying for at least two reasons. First, it doesn't look like the world is going to get any more peaceful anytime soon. The war in Ukraine is still in full flow. Tensions between China and the US are escalating. And the West's understandable preoccupation with Ukraine means that they don't have the bandwidth to help sort out other conflicts in places like Africa and the Middle East. Second, this situation could create a dangerous positive feedback loop. Food insecurity breeds political upset, which often means conflict, which in turn means more food insecurity. This is a point often made by the WFP. Helping poorer countries with their food supply is actually an investment of sorts because it makes conflict and therefore further food insecurity less likely. All in all, while it's definitely good news that food prices are falling, food insecurity is still at a record high. And if the world still wants to end world hunger by 2030, then everyone, especially developing countries, will have to start paying a lot more attention. Ultimately, we all want to be that person who learns something new every day. And that makes sense because everyday learning keeps us sharp and makes us and the world around us more interesting. But the reality is it's hard to do. That's where Brilliant.org comes in. That's because Brilliant.org is the best way to learn vital skills like maths, computer science and decision making interactively. 
Brilliant has thousands of lessons, from foundational and advanced maths to the latest artificial intelligence, data science, neural networks, and more. With new lessons added monthly and staying on top of the latest developments and trends you hear about in news and even our videos. The course on the joys of problem solving is a particularly great place to start, running through the fundamental decision-making processes that experts and even politicians make every day or at least the good ones. So to take a positive step in your learning, check out everything Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days. Click our special link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.